WeatherTech Raceway, Laguna Sega, the venue for Lamborghini Super Trofeo. Jeremy Shaw uh, is overlooking the action and ready to go. And these are the big beasts, the quick beasts. These will be the fastest thing we see in a straight line, I think, this weekend. Yeah, they could well be, John. And uh, we've got a great field of cars here for the opening round of the Lamborghini Super Trofeo North America here at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca, a classic race track on the West Coast. It's 2.259 miles around. Some classic names here, the Andretti Hairpin, the Bobby Rahal straightaway, the corkscrew, the Wade Rainey curve as well, just a classic venue. The best overtaking places on the, on, the, on the racetrack, probably turn two, possibly if you're really brave at turn eight, that's the infamous corkscrew, and down into turn 11, one of the tightest corners on the track, leads on to the front straightaway. But that's, uh, that's a lap of of WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. Huge for the cars here on hand again this weekend. The Lamborghini Super Trofeo celebrated its 10th anniversary last year. And now we've got 32 cars on the grid for this opening round of the championship. We're going to have six pro cars. We're going to have nine pro ams, eight ams, and L nine in the LB Cup category, which is basically for drivers who have little or no prior experience. There's a couple of drivers in this field who've never done a race before, let alone a pro race. So it's a, a, a big uh, spread of experience here on the racetrack and uh, it's going to be a, a, a tremendous race here this afternoon. We've already had uh, a couple of practice sessions yesterday. They had qualifying earlier on this morning. There'll be two races as usual this weekend. Let's have a look at the starting lineup for this opening round of the championship. We've got 32 cars. Let's start at the back. It'll be Ron Atapa 2 in car number 24 for Anson, Anson Motorsports. Alongside him, making his pro debut, Chris Tasker in car number 45 for, for Precision Performance Motorsports. Row 15, Dan Decker, local driver for World Speed in car number 33. And Rodrigo Valles in car number 34 for TR3 Racing. Row 14, Raymond Davudi, another debutant this weekend for the new Valkyrie Velocity team. That's car number 11. Alongside Fred Roberts from Canada in car number 89 for NT. TE Sport. His teammate Tiger Tari will start ahead of him on the grid in car number 17, alongside the 47 Motorsports car number 77 of Jake Walker. Row 12, Ophir Levy in car number 13 for Forte Racing, powered by US Racetronics. His teammate alongside car number 86 is John Hirschberg. Graham Doyle for Wayne Taylor Racing with Andretti Autosport will start kind of a 10 for a 22nd position alongside Gianni Torino, one of the pro drivers for TR3 Racing in kind of a 88. Row 10, Keon Tandon for NTE Sport in Carnival 20, and Dominic Startweather, another debutant for Valkyrie Velocity in Carnival 12. Row 9, Nico Jumin in Carnival 30 for Anster Motorsports, and the Flying Lizard Motorsports Carnival 64 is Tom Tate, another teammate for him for Flying Lizards. Carnival 14, Slade Stewart, last year's LB Cup champion, will start in the 60th position alongside the fastest qualifying LB Cup for this race, Mark Wilgus in Carnival 50, another debutant for Forte Racing powered by US Racetronics. Two more Flying Lizard Motorsports cars share row seven. Paul Nemshoff in car number 41 and Chris Belomo in car number 68. Row six for, for 47 Motorsports. AJ Musk, the former uh, Olympian snowboarder in car number 66, alongside Anthony McIntosh in car number 69 for Precision Performance Motorsports. Carter Williams, another debutant in car number 22 for World Speed, will start 10th alongside Joel Miller in car number 55 for 47 Motorsport. Then for Wayne Taylor Racing with Andretti Autosport in car number 8 is Nate Stacey in the 8th position, alongside David Staub for Precision Performance Motorsports, a fine effort for him, one of the AM contenders. In fact, the AM, the second fastest in AM, 7th overall. Cole Lofsgaard, another debutant for, in the Pro-Am Precision Performance Motorsports entry, car number 47. Alongside him, another PPM car, the pole sitter in AM, Tyler Hoffman, for the second time in his career. He will start fifth, that's a career best in the overall order for Tyler Hoffman. Row two on the grid is Ryan Norman, making the, the transition 
from the Pilot Challenge Series. He's raced in the last couple of years, formerly in Indy Lights. That's for Wayne Taylor racing with Andretti Autosport. His Lamborghini debut in car number 84. Alex Prema, vastly experienced Frenchman in car number 70 for Forte Racing, powered by US Racetronics. Another Pro-Am car will start in the third position. Front row of the grid, last year's champion. Fastest of the pro contenders in, in, for Danny Formal in car number one for Wayne Taylor Racing with Andretti Autosport. But on the overall pole position for the first time for Precision Performance Motorsports in car number 46 is John Capestro Dubetz from San Diego in California. Coming around turn 11 then, getting ready for the green flag, a huge field of cars getting ready to go here, just waiting for the green flag. Waiting, waiting, waiting. There is the green flag. John Capestrio de Betsy, that green and black car on the inside. He gets the jump on the newly liveried car for this season. That's Danny Formal on the outside. He's going to make a challenge on the outside line going into turn one. And a late breaking move there for Danny Formal. He just about gets that, that uh, top position as they head through the Andretti hairpin for the first time. John Capestri Dubetz tucks into second position. Behind him is Alex Prema in third position. Hugely experienced in all sorts of different cars. And he's going to be driving in this race uh, for the first time. His debut, first time in a Lamborghini Super Trofeo car. Cars shuffle themselves around farther down the order. This uh, qualifying session this morning was interrupted a couple of times and there was. Uh, a few drivers here starting out of position, including, most notably, I would say, Gianni, Turani, Gianni Torino in car number 88. He started back in the 21st position. He's running in the pro category for TR3 racing. Can't miss that car. It's red, white, and green, the colors of the Italian flag. And Gianni Torino is going to be trying to move his way up, up, uh, up the order as quickly as he can. First cars coming down now to complete their opening lap. Really good first lap here for the defending series champion, Danny Formal from Costa Rica, lives now in Boca Raton in South Florida. It's also back in positions to all the way down the, down the order. Tell you what, it's a nice clean opening lap for 32 cars here. I'm not sure I've put, put money on a successful better than all getting around on the first lap without incident, but they seem to have done so. I hope I'm not talking too soon. And now into lap two, it's Danny Formal who leads in second position is the, the pole sitter. John Capestro de Betts and uh, Danny Formal now stretching out his lead just a little bit in the early stages of this race. Using all of his experience here is Danny Formal, 27 years of age. Now he's made his debut in this championship back in 2020. He's had a total of eight wins in his 31 previous starts. New colors on this car for this year. And uh, but it's showing the same pace as it did one year ago. Now, two laps completed for the race leader. Stretching out just a little bit over John Capestro de Betz, who is chasing as hard as he can in second position. This is a, a timed race, a 50-minute race, and there's a, a, an even split of cars in this race that are running with solo drivers and with, with dual drivers. Everybody will have to make one pit stop, one mandatory pit stop during this 50-minute race. And the pit stop can be made anywhere between 20 and 30 minutes into this 50-minute race. The pit stop also has to be a minimum a time of 87 seconds is the, the minimum time. That gives plenty of time to change drivers if you need to change drivers. If you don't, you just have to sit in the pit lane and wait for that time to elapse. And the minimum pit speed time is between the pit in and pit out, the two timing lines on this racetrack.
super consistent driving here from the race leader, Danny Formali, stretching his lead over John Capestro de Betts, but these are in two different categories overall. It is the, the pro class for the race leader, Danny Formal, John Capestro de Betts, the best in the pro and category. He'll be sharing this car with John Capizzi, who splits his time between Cape Cod on the west, on the east coast, and San Diego, which is where John Capestro de Betts is from, on the west coast. And in San Diego, battling farther down the field, that uh, very distinctive pink car. And that's Slade Stewart. He's very much a fan favourite. He was the, the winner last season in the LB Cup category. And this year has moved up to Pro-Am. He'll be sharing that number 14 car for Flying Lizard Motorsports with Andy Lee, another very experienced driver. Heading up the hill one more time. There's a group of cars here battling for position. A little bit farther down the order, that green, white and red car, that is Gianni Torino, who's trying to move his way up the order. He started way down in the 21st place. Clean start here, four laps completed now by Danny Formal. Lead over John, du John, Castro John Capestro de Betts is uh, about three seconds. And they're running in different categories, of course. And Alex Prema, second in the Pro Am class, he's running third position overall. And Cold Loft Scard, originally from Minnesota, lives now in Las Vegas. He's a, an instructor at the Spring Mountain School out in Pahrump, Nevada. The 70 car is, uh, is Alex Prema from France. He's based nowadays in Las Vegas, driving this year for the Forte Racing powered by US Racetronics team. He's making, sharing this number 70 car with Jay Logan, who's making his pro debut this weekend. Alex Prema showing the way forward at this stage, running in the third position overall. Just. Uh, a ah, second or so ahead of Cole Lofsgaard, hanging on nicely there in fourth position. Alex Brenner, one of the most experienced drivers in the, in the entire field. He's, he's driven just about everything during his, uh, his career. He's a uh, former winner of the Macau Grand Prix, has had success in the, the Le Mans series. He's raced in the Supercar Series in Australia for several years as well. A lot of, had a great time down there. Finished third in the GP2 Championship back in 2006. Very accomplished driver coach as well. Running in the third position. Just a couple of seconds or so behind John Capestro de Betts. That wild car for Alex Prema, holding on in the third position overall. Delighted to be joined uh, on the commentary for this race by Brian Till, who's had some technical problems in the air. Brian, are you with us now? I believe I am, Jeremy. Splendid. Yeah, you're talking about Alex Premat, and you, when I read through the entry list, I looked at that and went, could that actually be the Alex Premat? And it shows you just how good this series has gotten. Entering the second decade of competition here in North America, the Lamborghini Super Trofeo series, and it attracts drivers like Premat to this series. And, and you look at his resume, you talked about it, F3, A1 GP champion. He was uh, a Le Mans winner, a Le Mans uh, series winner over in Europe when he drove for factories over there and now uh, part of this series. And look at this down through turn nine, this racetrack, Absolutely one of the most famous in North America, if not the world's one of those tracks, Jeremy, that's known by just one word. All you have to say is Laguna, and people know exactly what you're talking about. And this is why. <laughs> this is tremendous battling in the pack here. That, that green, white, and red car, that is uh, Gianni Torino trying to move his way up the pack. He's uh, running in the 14th position at Whoa. the end of the last lap. Whoa. <laughs> There's a huge lockup. Was that AJ Muss? 
coming in there? Uh, yes, it was. Yeah, in that sort of the khaki coloured car there. Uh, he's a snowboarder. Uh, uh, better known for his snowboard activities, but he's got a fair bit of racing under his belt the last few years. He's he's uh, done a, uh, uh, a half a dozen starts in this championship last season. I'm looking to run a full year in 2023 with the 47 Motorsports team. He's from San Clemente, California, so a home state track for AJ Muss. When you look at his competitive career as a snowboarder, and a lot of people who certainly follow the Winter Olympics would know of AJ Moss. He was very, very good and on the Olympic team on his way to start him perhaps before really a routine surgery almost killed him. He got an infection and was in an induced coma for a while. He said, you know what? I, I have literally seen death. Nothing scares me anymore. And there you go. If you're up in the corkscrew, you just saw him sideways. And I'm not sure it's the fast way, Jeremy, but it's the impressive. Yeah, it works for him. <laughs> he's, he's just gaining experience in his cars. He's had Buddy Rice, former Indianapolis 500 winner, as his driver coach the last few years. And he's really gained in, in leaps and bounds. Look at that. A good pass there down Man. the inside. Oh, problem there, the 86. Whoa. That's up at the corkscrew. That looks like the car went straight there in the braking zone. The question is, as close as these drivers have been running, he just get pushed wide to the outside. And Jeremy, not only is he in the tire wall and kind of underneath the banding there there's also a lot of gravel there i'm not sure he's going to be able to get out no that's uh, john hirschberg that was uh, he was running third in the class in lb cup he was dicing with his forte racing powered by us race Tronics teammate Ophir levy but i think he's got that yeah he's he's buried in the gravel yeah. that car's going nowhere full course caution on everybody getting a little excited out there we certainly saw it ever everywhere around this racetrack you could see it as the double yellows out at the start finish line that'll bring out the full course caution let's see if get an idea of what happens up the corkscrew just waits really really late gets the left sides onto the dirt there jeremy and anti-lock braking systems are a good thing but once you get those hand cooked tires over into the dirt the car is going to go straight it is you just got a bit oh, so that was that was close. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's was turned the, the guardrail magnets on, Jeremy. It's happening Man. all around the racetrack. Yeah, that was Dan Decker, who's got a lot of experience around this racetrack. Uh, as Danny driving for the World Speed Motorsports team and representing the San Francisco dealership a lot of time around WeatherTech Race Way Laguna Seca, but primarily in open wheel cars. But that move there by uh, by John Hirschberg, he just got a bit greedy, didn't he? Going down, diving down the inside of Ophir Levy, and Ophir left him just about enough room to uh, to either make it stick or, or or make a mistake. Unfortunately for John Hirschberg, it was the latter, and he goes off into the tire barrier, but uh, the car's not too badly damaged. He's going to clamber out, and uh, they'll drag that car out of there and be ready to go for tomorrow morning. It was interesting to see him climb out. I don't see a lot of damage to the car, but perhaps he's just said, hey, guess what? You can get an idea of how deep the gravel is as you watch the drivers there you look across the racetrack and see it's hard to get your footing take a look again and watch the left sides of Hersberg and that white black and red lamborghini huracan super trofeo evo get out there on that left side he just drops him in the dirt and you lose a lot of your braking capability and while abs is a good thing it's going to release a little bit of the brake there jeremy to keep those tires from locking up in the gravel and you don't want it to release any brake because you've got to slow the thing down yeah, that's right. And uh, off and leave, he just he didn't leave him a lot of room on the inside, did he? But uh, <laughs> it was uh, John, who I think was uh, yeah, just tried a little bit too hard at that stage. Early stages in the race, still a long, long way to go. We've still got th 36 minutes and more remaining. So he had a lot, lot of extra time to make that pass. And, uh, and the they, officials. They, both of those drivers are driving solo in this race. So uh, they've got the pit stops to come and then he's got you know, plenty of time to make that pass stick. Officials throwing out a lot of track limits warnings uh, in those last couple of laps. And we saw a lot of the drivers getting excited out there, certainly to say the least. It's easy to do when you're driving 600 plus horsepower worth of Lamborghini with 31 cars in the field. You think about that, Jeremy. I, I looked and I counted the drivers today. I believe that the number is like 51 drivers starting the race today. Of the 51, 29 of them have never started a Lamborghini Super Trofeo race before. And that doesn't mean that they're inexperienced drivers. We were just talking about Alexander Prima and the experience that he has. Sebastian Saavedra, Nico Jammin, 
those guys, Nate Stacy, Kyle Marcelli, Danny Formal, a lot of these drivers know how to race, obviously, Formal and Marcelli defending champions, but the car is different again this year, and it's not that it's the car, it's the four round black things that they ride on. The Hankook tire new to all of these drivers this year. Yeah, that's right, and uh, they, they've uh, not done a lot of testing on, the, on this Hankook tire either. Uh, that changed from last season. The drivers seem pr pretty happy with these tyres. They, uh, they, they seem to be pr pretty, uh, pretty durable and uh, and consistent too during a stint. And that's exactly what the drivers at this level, particularly those who haven't got a lot of experience, are, are looking for. And uh, we've had some pretty good lap times uh, during the weekend as well. The, the pole time uh, this morning, set this morning, was a. Uh, a one minute 23.986 that's only four tenths of a second outside the uh, the previous lap record here and it's quite warm this morning too so that was a really good lap set by john capestro de Betts this morning to take that pole position his first overall pole in this championship for john capestro de Betts for the precision performance motorsports team he's had uh, he's had five pro am poles in the past over the last uh, last last season but uh, that was his first overall pole, so a feather in his cap. All right, let's think about this, Jeremy. A 50-minute race, mandatory pit stop. It's got to come somewhere between 20 minutes into the race and 30 minutes into the race. So really a 20-minute window on either side of that stop. Should be opening in about four minutes. The question is, will they have to delay that pit window just a little bit while they work to get the track cleaned up? If they do go back to racing, Every competitor will have to take the green flag on the track before they'll have a chance to come to pit lane. I think they're going to have to push it a couple of minutes. Yeah, if, if, uh, if the window, yeah, good point. Uh, they, they might just uh, do that. They can stretch it a little bit. The, the, the uh, drivers will not be permitted to make a pit stop during the caution period. They'll have to wait till we go back to green uh, before they're allowed to make a pit stop. That'll be a 10 minute window during which those pit stops can be made, indeed must be made. So the 86 going on the flatbed, and that was just a little bit surprising. They must have some damage to the right front that you and I can't see very well. Perhaps the spectators in the corkscrew can, but I think the other interesting thing, Jeremy, is, and we talk about this whenever we look at Lamborghini Super Trofeo North America, four different classes of cars. So. Really, the driving experience is vast, to say the least, but all of the cars are exactly the same. Unlike the WeatherTech Sports Car Championship, where you see different classes of cars, all the cars are the same here. The only difference is the experience of the driver and the different window banners over the right side of the window banner up there along the top of the windscreen. You'll see those different colored little diamonds that will let you know what class it is. The Pro is that orange color, Pro-Am, yellow, Am, is green and the LB Cup competitors, the least experienced drivers in the field. That little diamond there on the windscreen is blue. You'll also see it on the back of the car on a tails away shot. You can kind of get an idea because on the rear bumper, you'll have one of those uh, little colored indicators for the class as well. Yeah, as you say, this is the, uh, the uh, second evolution of the Lamborghini Huracan Super Trofeo car and uh, I tell you what they are glorious machines they sound good they look good and uh, all of the drivers I've spoken to a bunch of the, of the newcomers this week and uh, yeah they're just grinning from ear to ear after after driving these cars for the first time and really as you said a lot of them 29 drivers making their debuts this weekend and all of them really looking forward to this with huge anticipation so excited to get this season underway it'll be six race weekends during the season the sixth of the weekend will be uh, coincide, coincide with the Lamborghini World Finals which this year will be held in Italy in November I'm going to try to get over for that one if I, I should say Italy in November that, that's not bad is it Jeremy yeah no, it's, what, are you, it's, what are you doing uh, in it, November well I, I hopefully be in Europe actually so uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe, you can, yeah. maybe you'll be there. Hey, uh, defending champions in Lamborghini Super Trofeo this weekend, five defending champions are back. And for some of them, like Slade Stewart, who won his championship last year in LB Cup, well, congratulations to him. But it moves him up a class again. They went, hey, congratulations, you've conquered this one. 
So we're going to move you up and actually moved up to Pro-Am driving with his coach, Andy Lee. But it's one of the most recognizable cars out there, that pink liveried unicorn painted number 14. And they even went farther this year, Jeremy. <laughs> they have a mascot. Yeah, they do. I love it. Uh, Slade, uh, <laughs> this is his, his daughter's uh, behest that this color was, the car was that color, and uh, they went with a unicorn motif, and yeah, it's, it's a real fan favorites in the paddock. We're going to go back, though, to green flag, and uh, 30 minutes uh, remaining in this race, so uh, the pit window likely will be open next time around. See who takes it and who doesn't. Yeah, I would think that it certainly would be. And again, you see those colored chiclets on timing and scoring on the left side of the screen and Lamborghini side by side through the Andretti hairpin. One thing about yellow is they put the field back together. What you get right afterwards, sometimes a lot of good racing and sometimes another yellow, Jeremy. Look at this. Yeah, really. That's Joel Miller and Wesley Slim going side by side. There. Wesley Slim's uh, made some big gains over the, over the winter. He'll be sharing that uh, number nine car in the uh, AM class with Tyler Hoffman, who has a lot more experience than Wesley does. Wesley's only uh, 21 years of age. In fact, he, he, he turned 21 just uh, last weekend. Uh, so he's uh, celebrating that in, in fine style by having a really good run here, running in sixth position overall and first in the AM category by, yeah, well, we've just close the field up under, under yellow, but uh, AJ Musk, who's running second in AM, is in 10th position, so he's got four cars between himself, Wesley Slim, and the second place car in the AM category. Well, and Wesley Slim and Tyler Hoffman won round one here last year, round one of 2022, and were immediately moved up into uh, the different class, and you see why, running really well here, and now the pit window is open, and we've got some takers. Yeah, the, the highest of the place car that came into the pits was Ryan Norman, who was running in the uh, the fifth position overall, just uh, just ahead of Wesley Slip. So he's going to be driving this race solo, is Ryan Norman. And uh, for the, for those drivers, for those uh, teams that have one driver significantly faster than the other, mainly read more, much more experienced, and in some cases massively more experienced, they will stay out as long as they can before handing over their car to their lesser experienced driver in this race. And then for tomorrow's second race of the weekend, the boot will be on the other foot, so to speak. So it'll be whichever driver does not start today will start tomorrow. And the, the, this morning in, in the qualifying session, it was split into two 15-minute sessions, and each of the drivers took one opportunity to qualify the car. For the drivers that are driving solo in this race, they took part in both qualifying sessions this morning. They don't have they don't have a, a driver change to make during this race, but they do have to make a mandatory pit stop. Well, and the mandatory pit stops have a minimum time on pit lane from pit in to pit out. It's 84 seconds if it's a tandem lineup, and it's 87 seconds if it's a single driver lineup. And that makes sense, Jeremy. And you and I have talked about this, and we explained this a lot in Lamborghini Super Trofeo. If it's a single driver format, that single driver knows what his tires are like, he knows what the racetrack is like, and he has a distinct advantage on the outlap. And so I think the officials did a great job when they created this series, and they looked at it and they said, hang on a second, we wanna make sure that you've got an opportunity to do it solo or with a partner, but if you're gonna do it solo, you've got a little bit of an advantage, and we're gonna to try to take that away from you and even things up. That's right. So uh, the, the drivers with sort of lesser experience, they're going to make their stops early if they've got a more experienced co-driver. That's certainly the case here for Slade Stewart, car number 14. He's got Andy Lee, who will take over at the helm of this number 14 car. Andy Lee these days lives in uh, Colorado Springs, Colorado. For many years, he was a, uh, a lead instructor at the Bob Bondurant School in Phoenix, just outside of Phoenix, Arizona. And before he was a lead instructor, Jeremy, he was actually a mechanic. And, and, and if you look at Ryan Eversley, who we have seen certainly in the Michelin Pilot Challenge paddock and the WeatherTech paddock as well, another driver who came up from turning wrenches to turning the steering wheel. If you want to be involved in motorsports, there is a way to get involved. And sometimes it can take you to, to places you never even dreamt of. Yeah, isn't that right? It's great to see the, a, a lot of drivers uh, having opportunities in this race. John Capestro Dubetz, he's another a great example. Cole Lofsgaard, too. I mean, they've they've been carving out a career as driver coaches for the last several years. And now the, the, there's 
opportunities for them to move into the pro ranks themselves with lesser experienced drivers and you know, taking full advantage of that. This uh, car number one, however, this is two pro drivers. Danny Formal, uh, who will bring that car into the pits, he'll hand over to Kyle Marcelli. That's the car that won last year's championship in uh, pretty convincing style. Done five of the 12 races in total and ended up with a, with a pretty clear victory over Laura Spinelli and Gianni Torino in second position at the end. Yeah, it was a spectacular year for Marcelli and for Mall, and they've actually taken that driver pairing. They've competed in the two endurance events so far this season in the WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. And a lot of times you'll find these pairings work so well, and you'll see it through all throughout the paddock and in the different classes that run here, the different series, I should say, that run in the IMSA paddock. Finding a teammate that you gel with, that you believe in, and who believes in you, that can carry you when maybe this isn't your kind of racetrack, or you can carry them when it's not their kind of racetrack, it, it, it's it's hard to do. And I, I think it's great to see guys like Andy Lee, who were Slade Stewart's instructor and his driver coach, Stewart going, hey, I won the championship, let's move up a class, and why don't you drive with me? Yeah, so cool, isn't it? I, I love that uh, aspect of this of this championship and, and others like it that have cropped up over the last few years. There's the pit stop completed then for that uh, former race leader, Carl Marcelli. He had probably lost a lap to the uh, John Capestri Dubetz, who stayed out and continues to lead the race for Precision Performance Motorsports. But uh, Carl Marcelli will come out now. He'll be up to speed pretty quickly and nobody around him on the racetrack at the moment, so good opportunity here to lay down some good laps early on and stretch that lead he hopes before uh, the others follow suit by making their stops in this race. There is John Capestro de Bezzo. You look he at the is... lap times these guys are running right now, Jeremy, and they're in the 86 to 87 second range, so not surprising to go down a lap. And the other thing, of course, we got to keep in mind is that you got to know who you're racing with, you know, and you don't want to get out there and try to push too hard. We talk about this multi-class racing all the time. Even these, even though these are all the same car, I should say, you've got to understand, hey, that guy that's in the lead right now, if they're not in my class, doesn't really matter. So you got to let everything settle down after the pit stops, right? And not let it get into your head. Yeah, pick your battles. Absolutely right. Yeah, who, who to fight with and who not to fight with. Here comes then the race leader into the pits. Uh, Alex Prem, I think, uh, has stayed out, so he will lead this lap. The 15th lap uh, has been uh, completed by the leading cars. And John Capestri de Betts will hand over this number 46 car to his uh, co driver for this weekend, John Cap Tom Capizzi Jr who's uh, got a fair amount of experience in GT4 cars, but this is his first race at this level in a GT3, and uh, he is absolutely loving it. Brian Till, Jeremy Shaw with you from WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. Round one of the 2023 Lamborghini Super Trofeo North America Championship. No better place to do it. It has been 188 days since a lot of these drivers were last competing in their Lamborghini Huracan Super Trofeo Evo. So back at it again, six race weekends, 12 races to decide champions in four different classes and championships all around the world as well. They'll meet in Italy for the final in November, but until then, we're gonna battle on some of the greatest racetracks in North America. We've got one right here. We have it. Here comes Carl Marcelli then to complete, uh, to uh, move ahead now of uh, Capestri de Betz. Oops, there's a mistake a little bit farther down the field. That's uh, one of the LB Cup contenders again taking part in his first race at this level. Graham Doyle, one of the Wayne Taylor racing with Andretti or this world entries. Graham is one of those interesting drivers in that he has very, very little real-world experience, Jeremy. He's got a lot of simulator experience. His dad raced a lot, and so he's been around it all his life. But young guy only got the opportunity to start driving about a year ago, but a big-time sim racer and turn six bites him here, or is it traffic? He just gets down there and loses it on the way out. Traction control is all well and good, but physics is physics. Now it's going to be interesting to see if they want to replace that tire barrier that kind of got pulled out of the way. We'll have to go yellow for that. 
the fire that yeah. you may have seen out of the exhaust of that Lamborghini, not a big deal. A lot of times when the engine stalls and they go to respire it, there's a lot of raw fuel that gets dumped through that hot exhaust. It'll ignite and then blow out. But it's getting wild out there, Jeremy. Another problem in turn six. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a tricky corner that one. I mean, we've seen there's been a lot of incidents there in the past, uh, and will will continue to be in the future as well. And that's a classic one there, just uh, kind of stepping out over the curb on the exit, get a wheel in the dirt, and the car loops around and and hooks into that inside barrier. Thankfully, it looked like there wasn't too much damage on uh, Graham's car, so I think he's able to get away with it. And the same problem here for the uh, number 88. I think that's Lucas Peterson having taken over from Gianni Torino. Yeah, he can breathe now. He got yeah. up on the curb and entry and just got the car a little bit loose. And that's the thing about this racetrack, Jeremy. You know it. You've driven here. All of the undulations, the camber changes, the compressions, they all have an effect on the car. One mistake can lead to a bigger mistake if you don't get it fixed and sorted and the pit window is now closed. You need to have been in and gotten that mandatory pit stop done or you are out of luck. That's right. That's right. I think we've seen all of the cars now have, have made their pit stop. So the uh, race order is back to how it, how, how it kind of was before. It's still Car Marcelli who leads. He's got a pretty handy advantage over the uh, second place. Well, the second place car hasn't yet come around, I don't think. Where is uh, it was Alex Prema who's made that stop. Uh, I think it's probably going to be Ryan Norman who's up into second position overall. He was one of the first drivers to make a pit stop during this race in car number 84. He's one of the drivers going solo for Wayne Taylor Racing with Andretti Autosport in car number 84 in the pro category. I think he's uh, leapfrogged his way up to second position as a result of that. You know, and Ryan Norman, another one of these impressive young drivers, Jeremy, as many of them do, come from an open wheel background. Uh, then moves into sports cars in 2020, Michelin Pilot Challenge, TCR class champion. But back to open wheel cars, he ran an Indy car race, his only Indy car race in 2021, just a couple of years ago at the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. He's got wins in the Atlantic Series, win in, in Indy Light Series. But stepping from a Formula car into a 600 plus horsepower Lamborghini Huracan Super Trofeo Evo with 80 lock brakes, traction control, 600 plus horsepower. That's got to be a world of difference and a lot. Well, more it has. And, and in the interim, he did he did a, a year or two with the uh, the Brian Hurd Autosport team in, in one of the Hyundai's in TCR, which is a front wheel drive car. So, uh, again, you know, three the last few cars he's driven, i.e. the Indy Lights car, the Indy car briefly, uh, and then the Hyundai and now the Lamborghini. I mean, he's got all the bases covered there in terms of uh, breadth of experience in different sorts of cars. Uh, but he's done a good job here. He's, he's only three and a half seconds behind uh, Kyle Marcelli at this stage of the race with about 18 minutes remaining. So he's done a really, really good job in that number 84 car. And in uh, third position overall uh, is uh, uh, Jay Logan, who is uh, taken over from Alex Prema and he's now trying to, to keep Tom Capizzi behind him. And right behind Capizzi is Sebastian Saavedra a pro, in the pro class in that number 30 car for Anson Motorsports, taken over from Nico Jamin. Capizzi there keeping the door closed going to turn yeah. left. Good move there. The thing I think is interesting about this year, Jeremy, there are a lot of new drivers. We talked about that as they're side by side through that bend, they call that turn one, and then down towards the Andretti hairpin. Heavy braking here. And then some people double apex this, some people just one long late apex. But then to me, into one of the more challenging corners on the racetrack, turn three, it's not one of the fastest corners by any stretch of the imagination. Third gear, about 104 miles an hour as you approach it, but there's just never any grip in turn three. And now turn four, hard to find a way by anybody Oof. in this section. Ooh, that's a big, big slide there uh, from Jay Logan. Good pace, and he, he allows uh, Saavedra to go down the inside. That's not a b battle for class position because Saavedra is running in the pro category, so it's now pros one, two, three. Marcelli leads for his uh, Wayne Taylor racing with Andretti or just what teammate Ryan Norman. Sebastian Saavedra for Anson Motorsports into the top three, having started a long, long way back down the field, that car. And then this battle going on between the three cars, well, actually, that's uh, the number uh, 88 is, is Lucas Peterson. He's taken over from 
Gianni Torino, he's running in the pro class as well, but Tom Capizzi and Jay Logan battling for the pro am honors. This is where we go back to saying you need to know who it is that you're racing with. But the other thing I was going to say just a second ago when the racing got so good, and here it goes again, so I may not get the thought in now, and that is all these new drivers in the series, this is probably the best year to be a new driver because with this new tire, even the experienced drivers don't know how it's going to work just yet. So everybody kind of uh, off a little bit because they've got to learn this new hand-cooked tire that's underneath them. And this could be your opportunity to come in here as a newcomer and really shine. True, very true. So it's now, uh, we've got pros now in the fo top four positions. Then the next four are all pro-ams. Tom Capizzi in that uh, primarily uh, green and white car, car number 46, he leads that pro-am class, green and black car, uh, leads uh, the uh, pro-am class, just ahead of his teammate there, Mo Dadka, who's moved up in car number 47, done a really nice job in that number 47 car. He has taken over from Cole Lofsgaard, who has a really good first stint. And Mo Dadka from Chicago, Illinois. He's a, a real estate, well, he dabbles in all sorts of different businesses. He's, he's an attorney, he's, he dabbles in real estate. Uh, he's done a fair bit of driving over the last few years as well, primarily in the Road World Racing League, uh, which is uh, a GT4 configuration car he drove last season. And he is stepping up into Lamborghini Super Trofeo and doing a really nice job for his term, first, first time in these very difficult cars. So you got a defending champion leading overall, Kyra Marcelli also in the pro category, then Capizzi leads Pro-Am. Staub in the 48, David Staub second in the championship in the Am Championship last year, but won here in round one of 2022. So certainly trying to get the season off to another good start. And then back in LB Cup, looking at the number 50 of Mark Wilgus, who leads the LB Cup category, side by side, all around this racetrack. This is what Lamborghini Super Trofeo promises. It's what it always delivers, and that is racing everywhere. And around the 2.238 miles of WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca, you're getting a great view of it today. <laughs> yeah, that's another Pro-Am versus Pro car. Uh, in the number 41 car, that's the car that was started by Paul Nemshoff. It's the Pro driver now, though, Mark Miller, who's driving that car at the moment, and he doesn't want to let Jake Walker, who's running the Pro category, to come past. That's a battle for seventh and eighth positions, but Miller is a, is a, a Pro-Am and Walker, uh, who's behind him, car number 77 for the 47 motorsports team. He's one of the pro category cars, but Mark Miller is closing in on, Mar on Mo Dadka, who again is closing in on Tom Capizzi. So the one, two, three in the pro-am class, number 46, 47, and 41, heading downhill now through towards turn nine, are pretty much nose to tail. And Andy Lee is closing in on them as well, as <laughs> is Johannes van Overbeck in car number 68, making his return to racing. So here's what here's what you've got. Mark Miller may be in pro am, but Mark Miller is the pro in the am, right? And so you've yeah. got the 77 there behind him of Jake Walker, who's in the pro category. But when you compare them, the two head to head, there are two professional race car drivers going at it, even though they're in different classes. Then that bright pink number 14 just behind Andy Lee, another pro trying to make his way up and get into this fight. So if you are in the Pro-Am category, it looks like the pros are in in the second half of the race today, and things are really closing down. Yeah, for some of the teams, I mean, uh, you know, Jay Logan, uh, he showed that car was Alex Prema. In, in their case, it was a pro that drove the first part of the race. And, you know, you, you're kind of at the mercy of the full course course at the wrong time, then the strategy can backfire. But now for the closing stages today, it's the, in these cars running at the front, it's the pros at the wheel. Tomorrow, Harry, it'll be the AMs who take the final stint in each of the cars. If you are a fan of WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca, and I don't know why you would not be, it always has great racing here. You'll notice some differences in some pavement coming up right here as they head down the hill and then through turn nine, the left hand diving left hand corner at the track out on the back side of the track out curbing a little new asphalt. Now you'll also notice it in turn five that leads you the left hander that leads you up towards turn six and then the corkscrew that put in for erosion reasons. But hey, if you pave something, Jeremy, a race car driver is going to find it and run on it. And that's what we've seen. With that extra pavement on the outside of turn six, I see the drivers using it a lot. Yeah, that's right. I, I'm not a fan of that, I must admit. For me, it, 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 
here's an analogy with golf. If, it, if, it's, if it's green in golf, use it. Uh, same here in, in motor racing. If it's paved, <laughs> use it. That's, uh, that's right. my philosophy. Uh, and if you're not supposed to use it, well, make, you know, give, give me a good reason, i.e. something solid to hit. Uh, then I'll try not to hit it. But um, you know, I, uh, I'm not a fan of that. I mean, most of the rest of the racetrack, uh, if you make a mistake here, you're going to pay for it. And, um, but, uh, you know, it is what it is, and it's the same rules. At least everybody's you know, running to the, to the same rules here. There's a good a bowl pass the inside. Jake Walker tries to make that move once again on Mark Miller, and Mark's having none of it. Having none of it as the 66 is having a problem. Lane Vakala, I believe, is behind the wheel of the 66 right now. Yeah. Carter, who moved to cars in 20, and... Got a lot of experience in open wheel cars again. Nitro Rally Cross as well with Dreyer and Reinbold in 21 and 22. And a little rally cross action there, perhaps. That's not what you want to do in one of these Lamborghinis. The car back underway. I tell you what, we yeah, with with Rally Cross and snowboarding, those two, those two, Lane Vicara yeah. and AJ Must have got uh, they've got a good man of experience in all sorts of different things there, haven't they? And uh, that was a spin there for for Lane, but he's, he didn't hit anything. He's going to live to fight another day and try and work his way back up the order. He keeps running about, uh, he was running fourth in the, the AM class, 16th, uh, 15th position overall. About 151 miles an hour as you head down in fifth gear towards the Andretti hairpin, then down to second gear, 46 miles an hour, the low speed there, and then through turn three where we saw Lane have that problem, the 66. At 106 miles an hour at the apex there, 104 miles an hour in third gear. So these cars cruising around here to say the least. Yeah, and uh, we saw the uh, the Sparkle Farts car, that uh, that pink unicorn car of, uh, of Andy Lee, just been overtaken there by Johannes van Overbeck in that number uh, 68 car driving, the, well, their teammates at Flying Lizard Motorsports, good buddies as well. Johannes van Overbeck, uh, he retired from the sport, didn't he, in 2018? Yeah, but uh, he, was, he was a relative youngster at the time. I mean, he's still only just 50 years of age. Uh, just turned 50, actually, last uh, what, two or three weeks ago, about a month ago. Uh, and he's been enticed back by his, uh, his good friend, Chris Palomo. And here they are. Uh, and uh, Johannes, who's won here in the Into WeatherTech Sports Car Championship in the past. Well, it was the LMS, the LMS days back then. But he's, uh, he's clearly not lost any of his skills, has he? Got a lot of experience here at. Uh, WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca used to drive for the uh, the Flying Lizard team in the old GT3 category, uh, and uh, he's, he's, he's you know, had podiums at Le Mans with that team, and back with the Lizards now, and giving a really good account of himself. Yeah, Tom Brady and Brett Favre retired as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we know how that worked out. <laughs> Last time I think Johannes raced here in 2018, he actually won in the prototype category. So uh, a lot of experience and. One of those drivers who's just silky smooth. You don't see him throw the car a lot. You just see him place it online, and it's one of those slow as fast kind of deals for Johannes van Overbeck. And welcome back to IMSA competition. Oops. Top five run going on right now in Pro-Am. Drake Walker again looking uh, to try and make a pass on Mark Miller. Again, Mark Miller having none of that. And ahead of those two, Mo Dadka and Tom Capizzi are doing a really nice job. They're, they're uh -oh. not pro drivers. Uh, there's the wheel of those two PPN cars, Precision Performance Motorsports from uh, from uh, Virginia, but uh, they are giving an excellent account of themselves, running fifth and sixth overall. That's a problem right there. The number 11 off at the exit of turn six and looks high sided to me. Going to be difficult to get yeah. that Lamborghini out of that situation. And with seven minutes to go, if that brings out a full course caution, the question is, is there time to get that car pulled out of the way and get the race restarted and dash to the checkered flag? Yeah, and I think that's, that's what's going on right now tough. with a lot of these competitors there. Hearing on the radio, we've got this car that stalled. I was gonna say that spin happened. It took a long time to happen because it was well beyond the exit of turn six. That car is stuck, and yeah. I think that's what everybody was doing, trying to make that last dash for a position, Jeremy, because I think a lot of these teams and drivers are afraid this could end under caution. Yeah, that's uh, that, that's a shame. Uh, another of the uh, debutants this weekend making his uh, pre pro debut, Raymond Devodi, who's a, a very accomplished restaurateur, uh, has restaurants in uh, in Texas and also in, uh, in San Diego as well, making his debut in the 
Lamborghini Super Trofeo. Did some Porsche Sprint Cup racing last year. I mean, his first time ever in a car was, uh, I think it was the end of 21. He did some uh, Porsche Sprint Cup last season, finished fourth in that championship, actually. He's coached by uh, TJ Fisher, who's had a lot of experience in Porsches and open wheel cars. And Raymond's uh, spun that car around. It likely to get going and only less than six minutes remaining we touch and go whether we can get back to green i hate to see it end this way but i'm afraid it may but we've seen some absolutely fantastic racing we expected to see that kyle marcelli on top in the number one the defending champion he and his teammate danny from all lead here and if you look back to last year it's exactly what they did they walked out of WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seco with a win in round one and a second in round two. That was not good news for their competition. That was the first of, I think you said it earlier, five victories on the season. The only other driver pairing that bested them was in the Pro-Am category. That was Bryson Liu and JCD, John Capestro de Betts, where they had seven victories in the 12 races, so or six victories, I should say. Seven, actually, for JCD yeah, and Bryce right, yeah. Lou. Um, but, yeah, this is the way you want to start the season. And, and I would say, Jeremy, that this is a racetrack where track knowledge, and, and, and even though it's a different tire this year, track knowledge and this car on this racetrack does indeed pay big dividends, even with a new tire under DT. Yeah, very much so. Uh, you know, you know the, the vagaries of the racetrack here. It's pretty warm this afternoon. Uh, so, and this is a, a track which historically you know, really gives the tyres a workout towards the end of a, a long race, or even a 50-minute race. You know, the tyres are getting pretty well worn. Uh, lap times have been yeah, pretty consistent uh, during this race so far, but uh, the tyres are definitely... Uh, they, they know they've, they've had a workout <laughs> this afternoon, and so do the drivers. It's a physical track as well. It's, it's you know, all of the corners here there's no two corners that are even vaguely close to, to being alike. And that's one of the great things about this World Tech Raceway Laguna Seca circuit. 11 corners and, and uh, a massive variety of turns. Elevation changes as well in there as well. It is a workout for the drivers. Well, and it's such an interesting track, and you just said why, but then you couple in the fact that right now this racetrack is scheduled for a repave in the next few years. And that's something that's welcomed by a lot of people, but it's got a certain personality now. Turns one, Andretti, or two, I should say. Andretti hairpin turns three and turn four and notoriously lack grip. Three especially gets a lot of that fine sand on it that blows around here um, in this area between Monterey and Salinas. And it's one of those deals that you just have to take that in consideration. It's very flat there. It's hard to get grip. So you want to make the car softer, but you can't, Jeremy, because then you've got turn five, turn six, turn nine, turn 10, all with big compressions, whether you're headed uphill or downhill. And if you make the, soft, the car soft there, it's going to bottom out. It needs support in those high speed sections of the racetrack. So it's really up to an engineer here to find a setup that doesn't have to compromise too much in each direction. But trying to find a perfect race car here is always incredibly difficult. Yeah, ain't going to happen. You're not going to have a perfect race car here at, uh, at WeatherTech Raceway. You're absolutely right. You know, it's it's going to be really good in some corners and not so good in others. You know, it's a primarily a, a left-hand uh, turning track. Uh, but uh, as you say, with that uh, elevation change and the variety of corners here, it's a real uh, a, a real challenge for the engineers to set up this car and, and also to you know, to to assimilate all the driver's information. I mean, the driver will come in after a session, say, well, it's doing this here, it's doing that there. Uh, and a lot of times it'll be conflicting stories. You're like, well, wait, it can't be doing that there. And then yeah. how can it be doing both of those things, right? Yeah, really. But it's true, it is, because the corners are so different. But what, a, what a day it's been uh, for the Precision Performance Motorsports team. They're running first and second in Pro-Am. They're running first, second, third, and fourth in the AM category. So a tremendous day uh, for them. In the LB Cup, uh, Forte Racing, powered by US Racetronics, running first and second. Uh, Mark Wilgus uh, is, uh, has led pretty much the whole race in car number 50. We haven't really seen him, I don't think, because he's been on his own. Ophir Levy, we did see him briefly when he was, when uh, his teammate Ophir Levy tried to make a pass. Uh, excuse me, when his teammate um, 
John Hirschberg tried to make a pass, but Ophir Levy, that's the first and second then for that for that team in that category. And overall, of course, Wayne Taylor racing with Andretti Autosport, first and second in the pro class. Carl Marcelli leading home Brian Norman. Inside one minute to go yeah. as the Lamborghini Huracan STO leads the field down. The lights are out. Are we going back green? The lights out are, they are right. out. We are going to go back green. And Marcelli's got his, his work cut out for him because right behind him is the 17. That's not for position. Where is Ryan Norman in the 84? I think right behind the last the car of uh, Tiger Tari. Yeah, here we go. Back at it. Green, white, restart at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. Round one of 2023 Lamborghini Super Trofeo North America. Marcelli just a little bit of a slide there in the Andretti hairpin. Took him just a minute to get back in the throttle. Whoa. Now back underway in action. The 41 around. Yeah, that's Mark Miller then out of uh, fourth position in that class. He was under pressure from David Starb, who's done a super job in the AM class. Uh, David Starb uh, in number 48 for, for Precision Performance Motorsports. Let's see, look if we can see what happened to David. Does he get a help? Mm, he kind of gets sandwiched there, doesn't he? Uh, it was the car mm -hmm. on the inside that moves into the 47, that moves into Mark Miller into the 41. So kind of a late move by the 47 up the inside. And you can go side by side through the Andretti hairpin. Three wide is a little bit difficult to do. We just saw that now down out of the corkscrew and bigger problems back in turn six. 14 involved. That's Andy Lee. Yeah, he's Meanwhile, been Marcelli about it, will have the run down the hill. Only about uh, six, or, six or seven car lengths back is Ryan Norman coming to the final course. Another car off there on the, uh, the entrance the, uh, to the, end, to the uh, final corner, but a good clear run to the checkered flag for Carl Marcelli. And 2023 will start just as 2022 did for Danny Formal and Kyle Marcelli. A win at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca in Lamborghini Super Trofeo. And this is what happens on green-white restarts a lot of times. Everyone needs to stay calm, and you got to remember you've got a whole season ahead of you, and we've got yeah. a lot of cars off the racetrack on that do, sprint to the checkered flag. That was the second-place car in LB Cup. That's off with Levy. He's off the road. Um, and, uh, yeah, we've seen a whole bunch of cars off the road in that final lap, so it's shuffled up positions quite a lot. In fact, we've got a... Uh, it's the same order at the front with Carl Marcelli ahead of Ryan Norman. Sebastian Saavedra in third position for Anson Motorsports, but in, in Pro-Am... Uh, Johannes van Overbeck has come from behind on that final lap to get past Tom Capizzi and take the win in Pro-Am, fifth place overall. That little battle there in the Pro-Am, the Am category, Mark Miller kind of involved in it as well. Like, it was tight before we went yellow, and you just had this feeling, Jeremy, that yeah. the yellow just closed it up that much more that when the green came out, uh, there was going to be some excitement, uh, and that's an understatement. Yeah, it is. We've got four or five cars off the road in various different places on that last lap. That's a real real shame there, but uh, in the AM class, I think... Uh, it's, it's what happened here at six? Up the hill. That's, uh, oh, the green car kind of got up on the curb, had to check up. Andy Lee had the run. Didn't even really think, I, I don't think he intended to even look around the outside. The inside car kind of checks up and everybody else from behind has to check up in right in the middle of that corner when the car is that loaded and you're expecting to go back to the bottom and everything in front of you stops. It's just hard to get it woed down. Take a look. See the green and silver car gets that big apex bump has to really check up and it yeah, just Tom stacks Capizzi. everybody up behind him yeah that was tom Cabezi. i think he'd already been overtaken i think by uh, johannes van overbeck uh, for the lead in Ooh. the uh, in the pro-am class but oh, there's some scary that's what I, avoiding that, maneuvers there that's what i don't like to see there were the yeah. trailing cars there were enough of those guys that should have seen a flag and a big dust cloud that i don't think the throttle was moving in the right yeah. direction i'll just say that yeah. when the yellow came out yeah, I agree there. But uh, in the uh, in the AM class, I think it's uh, it's Kevin Madsen who's come through, come, come from nowhere 
uh, to to win the AM class. It was it was a one two three four heading into that final lap uh, for Precision Performance Motorsports. But oh. Kevin Madsen making his debut in this championship for Ansa Motorsports. He's a he's a, a driver with all sorts of different experience in stunt driving in in uh, rallycross. You name it, he's done it. But uh, He's come away with the victory. He's managed to get find a way past Wesley Slimp in the closing stages. And he comes away with the AM class win seventh place overall for Ansa Motorsports. That was a big hit by Fear Levy. And I couldn't tell whether he got contacted by the car right behind him or not. But any way you look at it, not the way he wanted the day to go. But great racing all around this racetrack. You see this a lot. We called it on that green-white restart. Not at all surprising to see a little chaos and mayhem. As the safety workers get everything sorted out, Jeremy, looking at the pro class, we talked about it, Kyle Marcelli, Danny Fromall. Yep. What a way to start it off. Yeah, perfect start to the season, plus the, the point for pole position as well. So maximum 16 points there for Carl Marcelli and Danny Formal. Second position in the pro class, Ryan Norman, on uh, driving solo, making his debut, a good debut for him. In third position, Sebastian Saavedra and Nico Jamin for Anson Motorsports. And then in fourth position for TR3 Racing, it's Lucas Peterson and Gianni Torino working up very, very nicely from the 21st position on the grid to finish in fourth. In Pro-Am, Johannes van Overbeck in car number 68, along with Chris Beloma. They will take the win for Flying Lizard Motorsports in, in Pro-Am. Tom Capizzi and, and uh, the uh, overall pole sitter, John Capestrio Dubetz, come out second in Pro-Am for Precision Performance Motorsports. So boy, did it go wrong for that team on that final lap. Third position in Pro-Am is uh, Jade Logan, and uh, Alex Prema, uh, they will take the third position in the class. In AM, uh, Kevin Madsen in car number 24 with Ron Atapatu, who started last in this field. They win for Ansa Motorsports, ahead of Wesley Slimp and Tyler Hoffman for Precision Performance Motorsports. Then their teammates, uh, Glenn McGee in car number 69, uh, sharing with... Uh, uh, Anthony McIntosh in this race. So that's the top three in AM and LB Cup. Mark Wilgus led pretty much the whole way for Forte Racing Power by US Race Tronics to win on his debut from Fred Roberts for NTE Sport in second position. And third place in LB Cup, a long, long way back, was, uh, even though he didn't finish, was Ophir Levy in uh, the second of the Forte Racing Powered by US Race Tronics entries. The, uh, the, the winner in LB Cup, Mark Wilgus, he finished 12th overall. That's a really good job by Mark Wilgus, another debutant this weekend. Four different classes, 51 drivers, 31 cars entered. Lamborghini Super Trofeo from WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. 12 races in the series this year. One of them is down, but another one is coming your way tomorrow. Lamborghini Super Trofeo North America for Jeremy Shaw and Brian Till. Thanks for joining us, everyone. We'll see you next time. This program is a Radio Show Limited production. For more, check imsaradio.com and subscribe to IMSA Radio wherever you get your podcasts.